from articles and newspapers. Uh, but the movement on the ground has been near zero. Recently, the government of India has uh, kicked out uh, Amnesty International uh, so that no accountability is uh, you know, no chronicle, it's not registered, not written. Uh, uh, the second most important thing is that from when the US uh, religious right group wanted to go to India to have a look at what is happening in Kashmir, they were not allowed to. And uh, as you can feel that we don't have the access to human rights bodies, honestly speaking, we don't have any access. If they subscribe to the uh, government version or the governmental version of uh, the situation on the ground, then I'm sorry, we don't have any hope uh, left with uh, the UN Human Rights Council or UN Human Rights Bodies because they don't directly uh, address to us and they don't allow us the access that is required because anyone who's being oppressed doesn't have the facility. Even, we don't have the internet even in the in the valley, in Kashmir Valley. We don't have the internet access, uh, let alone uh, having the access to meet UN bodies. We, we are not allowed to be living our life under the shadow of the Bennetts and there's a lot, lot of operation going on right as we speak. And uh, the ripples and repercussions can be felt all, all across the country. Things are going from bad to worse on the human right uh, graph. And uh, what I personally expect the, uh, the UN human rights bodies not to repeat this, uh, the, the, the situation what we saw in uh, Bosnia or the situation that we saw in Iraq or Syria. We don't want that to be repeated. And this all happened, I'm sorry to say, under the auspices of the UN body, which claims to, you know, to be a representative of uh, human rights all around the globe. But what we have seen is that all these things happened right under the nose of the UN. And they couldn't do much because we lost a lot of lives. We lost a lot of lives, a lot of people destroyed. Uh, today, I'm sorry to say, 60% of the refugees are from Muslim countries. And this is the real situation on the ground. What we have to do at the moment and how we move about doing things is what we have to come together and discuss uh, and take uh, practical steps, practical steps. By practical steps, I mean the help should reach to the people uh, and people who are you know, responsible for these atrocities and destruction should be accountable or at least made accountable and they should be brought to books. Uh, but that's not happening. We uh, actually in the Middle East now, there has been a lot of voices uh, right from Kuwait to, to Qatar, to Bahrain, to other places in the Middle East, from Turkey. We are having a lot of concern being raised. But the point is the network of these oppressors is so strong that we cannot breach it. And we cannot reach out to the people who really are intending, uh, as, I, as we feel, are intending to help us. So I want this body to open a door, a vista, a road to, for us to reach out and, uh, and put our grievances and uh, we are expecting some relief. But till now, I'm sorry to say no relief has reached us. No relief has reached us because these bodies were accountable or at least the accountability bodies or the watchdogs, you know, human rights watchdogs have been already kicked out. And I don't know why uh, the UN body is not in a position to at least bring the culprits Uh, depressing. Uh, if you talk to a Kashmiri who's living here, say in the Middle East, uh, half of his family is already in danger. Children are suffering. Available to them, honestly speaking. And to the extent I'm like, it is. It's very painful if you know that. If you, it's very painful that they are ready to, you know, sell anything, including their owner just to protect their lives. This is the right uh, situation. The grim situation is like that. Uh, I have uh, some, uh, you know, on the ground uh, evidence on the people on the ground. There are some people in the army who are Muslims. They were, uh, uh, you know, the, their eyes welled up and they narrated this story to me that uh, the, an old father came with a young girl to offer her in order to protect his young son who was being incarcerated by the police. You can understand this situation. If you go through this and imagine that girl is our daughter, what will happen to you? Imagine that girl is our daughter. You have to offer the honor, the modesty of your daughter just to protect your teenager who has been incarcerated by these police forces, the Hindutva forces, you can say that. So this is this, the reality from the ground. I can make that person available to anybody you want. And this is so painful, so painful. But since there are you know hundreds and thousands of rifles pointed at you, 
and all the doors to Kashmir are closed. Nobody can enter. No unarmed person can enter. No human rights bodies can enter. No such institution is interested in taking care of them. So this is a slow genocide that is happening gradually. The change of demography, new laws are being implemented, new forces are on the ground, and they are under house arrest. The entire Kashmir is an open prison. This is the real situation there, and, and we are not joking. We are serious. Why an Arab has got to do with what is happening there? Why are the Arabs crying? Imagine, Arabs who were least concerned or bothered about other things, but they are now very, very concerned and very much uh, you know, in pain. Uh, they don't know what, who to say and what to, what to say. The thing is that, and, and then on the contrary, the situation from the other part, I mean, like the, the, the oppressors have all the access. They can manipulate the UN, they can manipulate the European Union, they, can, they have their media houses, you know, finely implanted at all these places. They have their lobbies, and these lobbies are working 24-7. They have a huge amount of money to invest in the oppression. So this oppression is well organized this tyranny is well organized and this tyranny is well accepted that's that's the worst thing for the first time in our lifetime at least me i am feeling that the voice of the oppressed is not being heard or it won't be heard as, as, as we believe is this is the biggest crime to stay unarmed to stay or depend on on these human rights bodies or these you know human bodies who claim to ensure your safety a safety to an unarmed person, to a helpless person, is the primary duty of the UN. That's what it was formed for. That's what we believe. It's, an, it's a world government. They have Interpol. They have all these agencies and a huge lot of money uh, to protect the, the, the vulnerables. But when the vulnerables are shouting, so for example, more than a year now, the girls, the boys, the children, they are not studying there. There's no, no question of studying. Even now there is a shortage of food. All the products that they had, I mean, like the apple and the fruits that they produce, has been uh, thrown to rot in the, in the go-downs and they were not moved. So they lost hundreds and you know, millions of dollars, these Kashmiris. They've become poor. This is economic terrorism that's happening on them. So they'll become poor, they'll be become mentally sick and morally corrupt. That's what they want to make. And this is happening right under the nose of the UN. So where do we go? Who do we complain? And what is the solution? What is the solution? Who is going to come forward? And are they allowed to speak to? No, I mean, I have spoken to a number of, you know, such UN bodies or NGOs from the UK and other places. You know, a lot of my friends, they said, we try to get them in time, they get one minute or two minutes. That too on the sidelines, all right? Because bigger agendas, business are being conducted. Here is a country that has got billions of dollars of business deal, you know, with a lot of these nations who could exercise some force of power on them. So they, they, care not, they, they, they prefer not to care about that. They prefer to sideline. So once they are sidelined, the question of uh, human rights uh, violation is not discussed. But the suffering is huge and humongous. People who really care, they are in pain. People who really care and people who really feel the pain of these oppressed people, they are in bad shape. They're in bad shape and feeling helpless. And if that happens, if that happens, continues to happen, you cannot oppress even a rat closing in a closed room. It will attack, it will retaliate. So if some retaliation comes from any corner of any place, just expect it, this is but natural. Look at what the Sikhs are doing at the moment. The Kisan movement, you say the farmers are, are making process. This is not the farmers protest, my friend. This is the oppression of the minority. Sikhs are also in the minority. They produce 90% of, uh, of the food grains in India. And they have been now, the only thing that these Sikh farmers have, they have only the farm land in their name. And the oppressive government wants to take that land and give it to the corporate. You know, the Hindus were corporates, the people who run the show. 70% of, of the country's wealth is in the hands of 1% of people. 1% of people, and they are known, you can count them on fingers. They make all the laws. They run the government. They conduct the elections. They invest in, in you know, these political parties. They, they, you know, they, they bankroll the political parties to keep them in power. And once they are in power, the laws are made according to what they want, according to their corporate, you know, uh, facilities they create. They facilitate these corporates in order to be rich and rich and richer. So the rich are becoming richer and the poor are becoming poorer and poorer in India at the moment. This is the real situation. So entire minority is, in, is, in, is totally messed up, totally messed up. The six, you can see they are in the street. Many of them have died already. There is a police attack on them, water cannons and all these, you know, 
uh, stuff is happening. Like what happened in Kashmir, now it's happening in the streets of Delhi. So the, these 2%, there are 2% six in, 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 in India and they're very hardworking people. The six are very hardworking people. Wherever they go in the world, they work very hard and they progress. So this is a progressive community. So are the Muslims, so are the Kashmiris. Kashmiris are the most literate people in India. Most literate, all doctors, engineers, very qualified people. But it's not your quality. It's not human quality that matters. It, it, what matters is that you belong to the minority community who is not allowed to express himself. So suppression is the motto. So once these people are suppressed, they are going to unite and they are going to unite, there'll be a rebellion. I'm telling you honestly, that's what I'm seeing on the ground. So once the rebellion happens, it'll be another Syria. If the UN doesn't intervene now, there'll be another Syria. You will see many people dying. You will see many people in bad shapes. War can happen or civil war can happen. How long will you suffer? How long will you keep selling your daughters? How long will you keep touching the feet of somebody who doesn't deserve to be made to sit next to you? So the situation is grim. And I'm here to tell you the ground reality. The Arabs have been made to know and they now know the situation. They are also perturbed. They, want, they wanted to, to discuss something, but each time they, they try to discuss the government, they lie. They lie. And they have their own stooges, you know, in the form of a Sikh and a, and a Muslim, their own representative who are sold out agents. They'll come to the UN and they will tell, no, 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 everything is all right. Everything is so rosy. So once you cherry pick the, the agents, so the real picture will not come to the UN. Real picture will never come. For that, you have to be on the ground. Or to talk to somebody who is on the ground, who has lost his dear ones. <clears throat> talk to them. So this is what I have to you know, share with you at the moment. And uh, if there is anything you want to ask, uh, I'm interested in answering. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Dr.